In this presentation, we'll review the effects of caffeine on the waking and sleeping body, as well as possible sources of caffeine. Caffeine is considered to be the most commonly used mood-altering drug in the world. In the U.S., it's estimated that 80 to 90 percent of adults use caffeine daily. Caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant that has been shown to alleviate fatigue, increase wakefulness, improve concentration, and enhance mood when consumed in moderation. In some people, caffeine can help alleviate the symptoms of a headache or make pain medication work more effectively. For most adults, consuming a moderate amount of caffeine is not harmful to their health. Moderate is usually defined as no more than 250 milligrams of caffeine per day. This amount might be found in one medium-sized coffee purchased at some popular coffee houses, in one 16-ounce energy drink, or in two or three 20-ounce bottles of caffeinated soda. Despite its benefits, even a small amount of caffeine can have unwelcome side effects in certain situations. Research has found that about 100 milligrams of caffeine per day can lead to physical dependence on the drug and withdrawal symptoms if sudden, suddenly someone stops consuming it. This is approximately the amount of caffeine found in six ounces of brewed coffee or two 12-ounce cans of regular soda. Some symptoms of caffeine withdrawal include headache, fatigue, drowsiness, difficulty concentrating, irritability, depressed mood, and even nausea. Caffeine makes us temporarily feel more alert by blocking sleep-inducing chemicals in the brain and increasing adrenaline production. Caffeine enters the bloodstream through the stomach and small intestines and can have a stimulating effect as soon as 15 minutes after consumption. Caffeine may reach its peak concentrations within the bloodstream 30 to 45 minutes after ingestion. Many people experience a crash once the caffeine-induced adrenaline wears off. Because ca caffeine is so widely available, it can be tempting and relatively easy for someone to consume more caffeine in an attempt to restore the earlier effects. Adrenaline is the fight or flight hormone, and for the body, each caffeine-induced adrenaline boost puts it in a minor state of emergency. This can make a person feel jumpy and irritable. Caffeine's effects intensify with the amount consumed. In addition to sleep disturbances, caffeine consumption may cause a rapid heartbeat, more frequent urination, anxiety, tremors, restlessness, and in some cases, nausea and vomiting. Adenosine is a chemical compound created in the brain that acts like a natural sleep regulator. It helps prepare the body for sleep and is important for deep sleep. Receptors on the brain can't distinguish between caffeine and adenosine. When a person consumes caffeine, it attaches to the brain receptors, blocking the adenosine and making the person feel more alert. When caffeine interferes with this chemical process, it makes it more difficult for the person to fall asleep. Once they do fall asleep, the person will experience frequent brief awakenings during the night that diminish the restorative quality of their sleep. The person most likely won't be aware of the awakenings as they occur, but they will feel less rested the next day. This can create an unpleasant cycle of feeling tired, consuming more caffeine to feel more alert, and then experiencing poor quality sleep the next night. Caffeine cannot replace sleep. <coughs> In terms of thinking and performing optimally and maintaining both immediate and long-term physical and mental health, there is no substitute for sleep. 
Unfortunately, many of us use caffeine to cope with sleep deprivation, which only perpetuates a cycle of disrupted sleep and its consequences. Caffeine use can also mask underlying sleep disorders, such as sleep apnea. Caffeine consumed immediately before bed or throughout the day has been shown to delay sleep onset, reduce total sleep time, alter the normal stages of sleep, and decrease the reported quality of sleep. Some evidence suggests that caffeine consumed early in the day also negatively affects nighttime sleep, especially for individuals who do not regularly consume caffeine. Nevertheless, even daily users of caffeine are still vulnerable to caffeine-induced sleep problems. Most of us underestimate the amount of time caffeine stays in our system. On average, it takes about six hours for half of the caffeine consumed to be eliminated from an adult's body. So, if Joe fills his 12-ounce travel mug with his favorite coffee at 4 p.m. and drinks it right away to feel alert while studying, by 10 p.m., half the caffeine from the coffee, or about 100 milligrams, will still be in his system. Depending upon when Joe plans to go to bed and how sensitive he is to caffeine, he could have a hard time falling asleep that night. When he does, he may experience the more body movements during the night, have a tendency to be awakened more readily by sudden noises, and decreased quality of sleep. Caffeine affects individuals differently based on their history of caffeine use, body mass, age, medication use, and health conditions. A person's gender may also play a role in caffeine metabolism. Research suggests that men are generally more susceptible to the effects of caffeine than women. However, for women using an oral contraceptive, it may take nearly twice as long to eliminate caffeine from their body as it does for women who are not taking an oral contraceptive. Given these individual factors, starting, Stopping or changing caffeine use could have slightly different results for each of us. This is one reason why it's important to pay attention to how caffeine might be affecting your waking and sleeping hours and to know where caffeine might be hiding in the foods, beverages, and medications you consume. Caffeine is found naturally in the leaves and fruits of many plants and is also sometimes produced synthetically and added to foods and beverages. So where might you encounter caffeine? Everywhere. Sometimes it's obvious. Most of us associate coffee and black tea with caffeine, but sometimes caffeine is more difficult to detect. Today, caffeine is added to ice cream, energy water, gum, mints, snacks, and breakfast foods. Even beverages that are labeled as decaffeinated have some caffeine in them, although it's generally much less than the caffeinated version. Caffeinated alcoholic beverages have become popular among some groups in recent years. This can actually be a dangerous combination, since caffeine can mask some of the depressant effects of alcohol, but it doesn't actually reduce the alcohol concentration in the body. In general, combining caffeine and alcohol increases some of the risks of alcohol use and is just as disruptive to sleep, if not more so, than consuming either of these products individually. Caffeine is also present in some over-the-counter medi medications, such as pain relievers and cold remedies, so it's important to read the labels. Food and beverage manufacturers are not required to list the amount of caffeine contained in the product. However, there are online resources available to help us detect where caffeine is hiding and the approximate amount contained in many products. With this information, you can make better informed choices about what you consume, how much, and when. 
What can you do to prevent caffeine from interfering with your ability to fall asleep and have a restful night? If you choose to consume caffeine in any form, keep it to a minimum and stop using it at least six hours before bedtime. Pay attention to how caffeine affects you and decide whether any temporary benefits are worth the later results. Remember that, cam that caffeine comes in many shapes sizes and colors. Take this into consideration when considering sources of caffeine in your life. If you continue having sleep problems, ex experts recommend quitting caffeine altogether or at least stopping after one caffeinated beverage in the morning. To minimize withdrawal symptoms, you may want to gradually reduce your caffeine intake over a series of days or weeks. Break out of the caffeine sleep problem cycle. Don't use caffeine as a replacement for sleep. A daytime nap of one hour has been shown to improve performance and alertness significantly better than caffeine. Ultimately, the best cure for drowsiness is to sleep a significant number of hours each night with as few disruptions as possible. You can take steps to make sure that caffeine does not interfere with these goals. This concludes the caffeine and sleep presentation of Sleep Well.